Boom. What's going on, everyone? Mark Loblander, CEO, MTS Nutrition. Um, I was actually on a walk with my wife. We took a beautiful nature hike today out in the uh, mountains of Tennessee. Beautiful area, beautiful trail. And I'm um, just enjoying life, soaking in the sunlight. Got home, like, such a wonderful, blessful day. Like, where you're just like, this is why I'm alive. You know, I took the day off of the gym, took the day off of boxing. I usually do at least one a day. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to heal. I'm going to mentally recover from being in the gym, going hard day in, day out. It's been a very stressful, um, a very stressful couple weeks, couple months, couple years in business. And I just needed to, you know, get some time. So I come home and um, open up my Instagram because I posted a picture of Katie and I on our walk. And I noticed that a great bodybuilder, a great man, and somebody who I had the pleasure of knowing, that's Andy Heyman, has passed away. You guys might know him as kind of a smart aleck, kind of a silly guy, very eccentric individual. I'll never forget, I was across from him at, I believe it was the Arnold the Olympia one year. And I'm standing there and this dude is dressed up as a superhero and just having the time of his life with kids, with adults, hamming it up. I believe it was a diamondized athlete at the time and just a great individual, full of life, full of energy, one of the most respectful, kind individuals you'll ever talk to, ever meet. And I believe he was 55 years old and from all accounts was a phenomenal father and a phenomenal man. And he happened to be a bodybuilder. So two reasons for this video. And I got away from doing these videos and it, it, it's not clickbait. I think it's to bring things down to kind of reality. As I'm reading through the comments, because I'm trying to find out how he passed away, right? Is it COVID? Is it kidney? Is it a heart defect when he was born? Is it, did he get hit by a car? I don't know. And um, all the comments like bodybuilders are dying young, bodybuilding is a dangerous sport, bodybuilding, they take too much drugs, not knowing the drugs that Andy took. Now, Andy was not a top level pro. He was not using, from what I can tell, drugs that made him larger than life. He was large, he was good looking, he had a lot going for him, but he wasn't at that level of Big Rami, right? He wasn't just so unhealthy. You could tell the yellow in a lot of these guys' eyes, their skin takes on a different tone because their liver and their organs are working so hard. And he looked to the blind eye, relatively healthy. Like you tell when Dallas McCarver had his issues, you could tell by looking at him, you could tell by looking at his eyes. And I'm not saying this is a diss whatsoever. Obviously it's a tragedy. You could tell that his health wasn't where it needed to be. I did not get that vibe from Andy. And while I think it's great to look in and say, hey, is bodybuilding really all worth it? Is it worth your life? And I say that every day. Every time I do a video on HRT, every time I do a video on steroid use, I warn people against overdoing it. I recommend people not do steroids at all. And I recommend that if you do do steroids, you do it under a doctor's um, supervision and you get it prescribed, use HRT. So you don't get black market drugs where you don't know what's in it, you don't know if it's dosed correctly, and it's just a dangerous situation, right? And I don't want you just going on cycles where you're taking grams and grams and grams of steroids, when again, even water, even water is toxic if you drink it in too much, in, in, in a higher high enough quantity, right? So if water can be toxic, obviously if you overdose steroids, they can be toxic. With steroid use, you have terrible things can happen, right? Uh, you can have lipid. It doesn't cause your death directly, but it will damn well contribute to your death, right? 100% because it throws off your, LD, your lipid profiles. It throws off your HDL, LDL, which can be contributing factors and comorbidities to other ways you die, such as heart failure, etc. With that said, I've known in my life, in the last 10 years, I've had probably 20 people within my, my outer circle. So I have my inner circle, then people who know my inner circle die of natural and unnatural causes, most of them being natural. A lot of these people didn't lift. A lot of these people weren't athletes. Many of these people were actually healthy. Many of these people went on jogs, did cardio. They weren't hardcore bodybuilders. Very few of them used steroids. At the end of the day, people die. 
And people who are more likely to die generally have higher comorbidities. For example, people who are overweight. Obesity is a comorbidity in many things, such as 78% of deaths from COVID, I believe, I could be misquoting, I don't have them in front of me, um, were of obese individuals or overweight individuals. And then you have other factors, right? 85% of hospitalizations from COVID came from people who were deficient in vitamin D. Why am I using COVID? Because you all know what's going on. It's in the news, right? You have people who die of heart attacks. You have people like when you look at the overall age of death, what is it now in the US? 78 years old for males, somewhere in there, 77, even less, 63 for black males. And that doesn't mean that every black male dies at 63 years old. That means that when you combine old deaths, that 63 is the average. Some might die at 100. Some might die at 5. Some might die at 30. Some might die at 40. So when we look at bodybuilders, you look at Andy, and he's 55 years old. That is still really, really young in the grand scheme of things, right? That's past middle age, but it's still really, really young to die. However, we need to look at how many 55-year-olds who are even healthy, marathoners, average weight people who die. And it's pretty plentiful. A lot of people die and death is a part of life. The sad thing is when somebody dies outside of bodybuilding, we look at it and we say, it's such a tragedy. I wonder how Bob died. That's such a tragedy. When a bodybuilder dies, here's what happens. Man, Andy took too many drugs. It was obviously steroids. And nobody knows why he died yet. Well, some people might know. I certainly don't know. And I, from what I can tell, the, the internet doesn't know either, right? So, but automatically, your mind goes to the steroids. Automatically, your mind goes towards Andy abusing steroids. Now, I haven't seen Andy at a trade show, obviously, 2020. Nobody saw anybody at trade shows. I haven't seen him on the scene for the last three to four years. Like, He's obviously probably not pushing the envelope. And if he is, he is. But the guy's 55 years old. His father is doing his thing, right? I honestly don't know if steroids were a cause of his death or even a comorbidity. But what I do know is that death is unfortunate. And I do know that people die. And no matter what, it's a tragedy. And that's why you'll hear me on this channel. And my focus has, you know, gone from just saying boom and, you know, and, and doing videos and clickbait bullshit. To, I do a lot of training videos. I do a lot of instructional videos. Next week, I'm going to start doing videos of me training kids, training my kids, showing you how to train your kids, showing you the proper progressions to train your kids, which I've already started doing. I'm going to do more educational stuff. I've been doing this for a long time. And because I'm not doing clickbait, you can tell, I just got up to 390,000 subscribers. My subscribers are growing up about a thousand a month. Yet I can barely get a thousand views for videos. I don't know if I'm shadow banned. Or I don't know if I'm just doing boring shit that y'all don't want to see. But this is who I am and what I'm doing right now. Because I'm not a YouTuber. YouTube does not pay my bills. You might look at it like, oh man, Mark's, Mark's going from 20,000 to 1,000 views per video. And I look at it and I'm like, okay, YouTube doesn't pay my bills. I don't even notice that YouTube money. I'm not a YouTuber. But what I'm doing is things that I want to talk about. And what I want to talk about now is that instead of jumping to the steroids killed him thing, I think we should look at the fact that here's a man who lived his life to the fullest. Here's a man who pushed his body to where he wanted to push it. Here's a man who enjoyed every second of his life. In the next 20 minutes, a cloud might roll in from right over there. And lightning can strike me dead right here. I can get bit by some kind of poisonous bug that lives in the state of Tennessee and my leg might get nasty and infected and I might die. And we're all at risk of dying every time, every time, every time we're alive. Every second of every day, we're at risk of dying. Every second of every day. All we could do is live life to the fullest and do as much good as possible, make as much impact on the world as possible, leave as much of a positive legacy as possible. And that's what Andy did 
from what I can tell, the man lived his life. He was infectiously energetic and happy. And that's the way you want to live. So again, my condolences go out to his family. But I think before we jump on that whole steroids killed him bandwagon, as you can see, just go to RX Muscles Instagram. That's where I saw all these comments that I'm responding to. And just realize that that might not even be a comorbidity. We don't know. We don't know. It might be, might not be. But let's use this as a lesson for all of us. Every day might be your last day. So you need to get out there and you need to build as much wealth, as much success, and do as much good as possible and infect everybody with positivity. And then you could truly say that you've lived your life. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. As you could tell, spring has sprung. It's gorgeous out here, the great state of Tennessee. I really appreciate you guys watching this. If you have any comments, questions, go down below in the comments section. And again, be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and click on the notification bell. That way, when YouTube tries to suppress me, if they are, not saying they do, if they are suppressing me, at least then you'll be notified when I do a video. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's not a game. The IRI bar was created for my kids. My kids need a snack to eat during soccer tournaments, and also I wanted a bar for myself to eat pre-workout, post-workout, and also throughout the day. You want your outright bars right now. That's why we have a partnership going with The Vitamin Shop to make sure that we're in all 750 plus locations, providing the best price, the best service, the best people to give you the outright bar when and where you need it.